Hello everyone. So today I'll be presenting the Azure monitoring solution in UIM. So when it comes to Azure monitoring, so it is nowhere different with respect to the deployment of any other probes in UIM. So from a deployment perspective, uh, Azure can be deployed on any robot uh, which has the capability with a Java runtime environment. And uh, the configuration of the Azure monitoring today it can be done in two ways. Option one is to leverage the admin console configuration and option two is through the one config service that is UMMCS. But because Azure is a high scale remote monitoring probe and it's a, it monitors the health and performance counters of the services that Microsoft Azure provides. It's a completely a remote probe. So the bulk deployment with respect to MCS or through the admin console, the experience will be seamless. Uh, there should not be any difference with respect to the bulk deployment aspects when it comes to the configuration through admin console or operator console MCS. So I'll quickly walk through the configuration model through the admin console. So for the monitoring configuration, right? So the first and starting point will be what kind of metrics that we would like to collect, what are the rules around the metric collection, uh, and what kind of resources that we would like to include in the metric collection with respect to the health and performance counters. So before we start anything around collecting the data of the Azure services on a given subscription, there is something called Azure Data Services Health. So as and when the probe is deployed and we get into the configuration section, even before we enter any details about our subscription, Right. So this is something that will come out of the box and this functionality will let us to see the global health status of the services which are present in a given region. So the information around the regions will be dynamic based on what we see in the Azure Service Health Dashboard where it actually tells that what are the different services that are actually provisioned in a given region and what is the global health status of those services. The exact information can be replicated in UAM using this Azure Data Services Health. And the advantage is we can actually create metrics around this, like we can publish cause information and we can also create a threshold configuration for alarm management to see if a particular service in a given region is down, we can get an alarm notification for that, right? So that's the advantage of Azure Data Services Health. As I said, this is nowhere dependent on the monitoring configuration of a given subscription, right? So this comes out of the box and this is an optional capability that UIM provides. Now coming to the actual resource monitoring that is available on Microsoft Azure Cloud. Right. So the monitoring configuration should be started from the template editor when it comes to the admin console. So this template editor will let the users to create the bulk configuration for different resources and the list of metrics for those resources which needs to be enabled and the threshold configuration and the related entities like uh, timeout thresholds and other functionalities that we see in UIM, right? How quickly we can create this template? So when it comes to that aspect, so UIM ships a default factory template and this will come up with a certain metrics which are enabled by default. Now, once the factory template is available, what we can do is, as a user, there will be two options that will be available. One is we can create a template from scratch or we can simply do a copy of the factory template and then we can customize based on the requirements with respect to what metrics on a given service has to be enabled and what metrics that are not part of the requirement, we can disable those, right? So that's the advantage of copying the factory template, right? So a sample template that has been created by using the copy functionality and then customized some of the cores 
based on the requirements. As you can see over here, in this template, there are many services around the network like uh, load balancer, uh, express routes, right? And then traffic manager, virtual network. So these are the services that we support today, UAM supports from a networking uh, area. Similarly, under the compute, UAM supports monitoring of the virtual machines, scale sets, right? And some functions. So those are something uh, that are supported under the compute compute services. Similarly, the most widely used services on the Azure cloud, the SQL Server and the SQL Elastic Pool, which is a managed service for managing the SQL databases in a cluster mode. And then services around the storage monitoring, uh, you know, event subscription, which is uh, uh, around the event grid service that uh, Microsoft Azure supports. Uh, and then messaging services, right? So these are the va uh, various services that are supported today in UAM. And the way we enable the metrics will be first create a skeleton of what kind of a metrics that are required for each of these services. And for each service, you'll find a node under the resources section. And then whatever the metrics that are required, after we apply certain rules like, okay, what kind of locations that we are looking to monitor, right? Uh, or what kind of uh, tags or labels through which we can apply filters, we can do that. And then for those resources, we can create the template, like what kind of cause that has to be enabled. And then we can also enable the alarms over here, right? Similar way, we can apply the monitoring configuration for rest of the services as well, right? Uh, certain services like uh, virtual machine, we can set the metrics at uh, the virtual machine level. And also we can set the metrics at the node level as well. Like at a virtual machine, we can say, set the metrics like what is the instance state or the power state of the virtual machine. But there are sub nodes within these virtual machines like CPU, disk, memory, right? Uh, again, there is a caveat with respect to the virtual machine for Azure monitoring when it comes to the Windows machines, right? So we can capture the metrics related to CPU, disk, and network. For remaining set of metrics, we have to enable the diagnostic settings on the Azure portal. For Linux machines, CPU, disk, and network will be supported by default, right? All right. Uh, similar way, there can be subnodes for other services as well, right? Like service bus, right? So we have certain metrics at a service bus level because service bus is a combination of certain queues and topics, right? Where we have a uh, publish subscribe model with respect to the topics. We'll also have the configuration items related to the subnodes as well. So for queues, we can set set uh, cause, and similarly for topics within the service bus, we can set the cause. So for each of the nodes and the sub nodes, we can actually select what kind of metrics that are required so that we can subsequently do a monitoring with respect to the service level agreements or with respect to the uh, trend reports and other uh, alarm management and other areas of monitoring aspects. All right, so this is a skeleton so far what we are talking about, right? So once the template has been created with the list of metrics that are required with the right threshold configuration, we can actually set that if this template is something that we would like to apply it for the subscriptions that are being maintained, then we can actually make it active so that any monitoring profiles that we create, this template will be automatically be applied. And we need not stick to one template, we can create multiple templates, right? The advantage of multiple templates is, say for suppose, we create a template for a set of services and we create a different template for remaining set of services. And by any reason, if at all we want to disable for a subset of the services, but not all with respect to the monitoring. So creation of multiple templates will help over there. But again, uh, we have to be a bit careful when we make multiple templates active because precedence comes into picture. So the way precedence works today is if multiple templates are enabled, right? It will actually check what is a least ranking digit over there. So a precedence with say level one 
takes higher precedence with a template with precedence value equal to 2 right but if the precedence is equal for both the templates then currently it will go with the alphabetical order but we generally recommend to set the precedence if there are multiple templates so that you know we can better manage the enabling and disabling of the templates all right so once the template is created right so we can apply this template for any subscriptions that we maintain right so to start with so this is a monitoring profile configuration for a given subscription where it is important to enter few details for making a connection to the azure monitor so the first one is the subscription id which is Azure, uh, you know, GUID for the overall subscription and then Active Directory ID, right? So this is nothing but the tenant ID and then the application ID. We can have multiple applications within uh, Active Directory, right? So this is the application ID slash the client ID and then obviously the client secret, right? So these are the must and should values for creating a monitoring profile in UAM. And then obviously the interval to what level uh what interval that we would like to collect the data what kind what is the frequency uh, so and then whether this profile is active or not right so these are the general configurations that we see for other monitoring uh, probes as well but for azure there are few specifics around the subscription active directory etc right all right so once the monitoring profile is created so what will happen is Azure is a high scale probe which has the capability to do the discovery where it parse the entire subscription on the Azure monitor and it identifies the resources from different services. So as you can see over here, these are the different services which has been identified in the subscription that has been currently connected to. And then these are the different instances that the probe has discovered as part of the discovery process right now once the discovery is done we need not worry about enabling or uh, disabling a certain metrics because that is something that has been already done from a template editor perspective right as you can see over here the metrics are automatically enabled because the template was set to active and it was automatically enabled on the subscription so this will save a lot of effort especially when there are multiple resources in the cloud environment right so we can expect thousands of virtual machines and we need not enable or disable metrics for each and every instance that is there on the cloud right so that's the beauty of the template editor similar kind of a functionality we can expect uh, from mcs as well but because as i said this is a remote monitoring you know with respect to the configuration the amount of effort that is required to configure the azure monitoring will be almost same compared to admin console and mon config service configuration all right so few concepts around uh, this monitoring configuration when it when we get into the very root node of this configuration we'll have certain options like forward azure alerts so what does this mean is if by any reason we would like to fetch the alerts from the azure cloud from the azure monitor where we are also interested with the alerts that are generated by Microsoft Azure along with the alerts that UAM has generated, then we can actually enable this option. And along with that, we may not be interested to forward all the alerts from Azure, right? We may be interested only for certain resource groups in Azure. So then the recommendation is just enable this and make the comma separated resource groups over here, right? So that will actually filter the alerts uh to the uam and the way the mapping happens is say for suppose there is a save zero alert on the microsoft azure then that will be mapped to a critical alert in uam right subsequently save one will be mapped to major save two will be mapped to minor so that's where the mapping has been taken care of within the probe itself so the mapping will automatically be done by the probe we need not worry about that all that we have to do is enable this if required there is a requirement to monitor uh, or fetch the alerts only for a certain resource groups apply the filters accordingly right all right and then detached configuration so detached configuration is again a concept uh, in uam which will actually help 
when there are certain active metrics that are enabled in UAM, but the resources are deleted on say Azure Cloud. Like say for suppose we collected the data for a virtual machine till yesterday. And today the virtual machine is deleted on Microsoft Azure. In that case, by any reason, if there is a threshold configuration that has been enabled, then there is a possibility that the alerts will keep, uh, you know, uh, adding up on the UAM side, right? So how do we ensure that any detached resources on Azure can be disabled in UAM using this detached configuration? So currently I do not have any detached VMs, but if any VM or any resources are detached from Microsoft Azure, so we can actually leverage this capability to delete those resources from here so that the alerts won't be repetitive on the VM side. So that's the advantage of this detached configuration. All right. So once the monitoring profile is created, uh, the required configuration is set through the templates, the required cost metrics and thresholds are applied on the resources, right? What next? So the next aspect is how do we manage the inventory that has been collected by UAM? Right. So for that, we should get into the operator console. So once the discovery is complete from the Azure probe, so we'll be start seeing all the resource items on the inventory section over here. Right. So these are the list of resources that UAM is has discovered with the subscription that we have connected with, right? And as you can see over here, we are actually seeing the virtual machines. We are seeing the scale sets. And uh, we'll be seeing an API endpoint, right? But what about the other resources like the SQL Server, like storage, right? The reason why we cannot see those in the inventory is those are not the devices in UAM perspective. Those are the configuration items because you know the requirement for an entity to be a device in UAM is it should be like uh, you know there has to be certain aspects like it has to be an IP address enabled uh, or MAC address enabled, right? Uh, or it has to be there has to be an OS that has to be associated with it, right? So unless and until it meets those requirements, uh, you know we cannot directly see it in the inventory, but those can still be managed through the configuration items, which I'll demo it in a minute, right? So all right, so these are the list of uh, resources, uh, I would say devices that have been discovered by the Azure Pro. This is good, but now let's assume that there are around 10,000 resources uh, that the Azure Probe has discovered and we are seeing this raw data. How can we easily manage this data with 10,000 devices, right? I think that's where the grouping concept comes in UAM. Now, when it comes to the grouping of the resources, right? Again, there are multiple options for us. Option one is, are we looking for a kind of an automation, kind of an auto grouping? If we are looking for an auto grouping, what's our requirement? Is it our requirement based on a certain criteria like location, right? So today, UAM Azure provides auto grouping based on multiple criteria. One is based on the location. As you can see, this is one of the group that has been automatically created based on the auto grouping configuration. And by any reason, if a new resource is added on Microsoft Azure or provisioned on Microsoft Azure, then, and if it is on a different location, it will automatically come into this dynamic group, right? We need not worry about that. And the resource will automatically get into the corresponding grouping section. Similar way, UAM not only just provides the auto grouping based on location for Microsoft Azure, it also provides the grouping based on subscription, it provides grouping based on resource groups, provides grouping based on subnet or the monitoring profile itself, right? And the reason why UAM is capable of auto grouping is because for each and every resource that we collect, right? There will be certain attributes that we collect for each of these resources. And because UAM has the complete attribute information around the resources that have been discovered, the auto grouping 
can be supported on various aspects as I mentioned just now. All right, so this is from auto grouping perspective. Again, uh, this will work well if at all we want to manage the resources by the locations or the resource groups or the subnets uh, that I mentioned. But if at all, we have a very custom requirement that you know we want we would like to monitor based on uh, you know uh, multiple child hierarchies. Uh, while auto grouping helps us to immediately you know uh, group the resources uh, and we need not worry about the grouping filter criteria. Sometimes we may end up with uh, grouping at three to four levels. Like within Central India, we would like to group the virtual machines scale sets. Like for those kind of a custom requirements, it's important that we should know what are the filter criteria that are required to create this grouping model. For example, for virtual machines. You can see over here, this is a dynamic group that has been created, meaning any new resource that is provisioned on Microsoft Azure, a virtual machine, it will automatically come into the group. But what we should ensure is we should create the right criteria. The criteria is very simple. Vendor should be Microsoft Azure and role should be virtual machine. Once this configuration is done and if any new virtual machine is provisioned, it will automatically come and sit in this group, right? Similarly for scale sets, Active VMs is a very custom group that I have created for, say for suppose, I'm not interested in all these 87 virtual machines. I'm interested in only the virtual machines for which the machines are turned on on Microsoft Azure, right? So in these cases, right, we can actually leverage our cause data for grouping as well. Like we have a cause called power state, right? And we can tie it up with a custom SQL, uh, which will be there in our documentation. And we can actually make this possible using those custom SQLs, right? So this is one more functionality that we can leverage to monitor or to create the groups for the active VMs as well, right? All right, so we're good with respect to grouping the devices, but what about the other services that have been collected by the probe, right? So that's where the endpoint matters. That's where the endpoint with respect to the monitoring profile matters, right? So as you can see over here, this endpoint has the configuration items related to storage, websites, service bus, event subscription, event hubs. And the reason why it is coming under this endpoint is because these are the configuration items. So it will not stop us to create the monitoring metric views or uh, PRD reports or any other dashboarding and reporting or even the alert management as well. Right. Only thing is we should know that the configuration items, which are not devices, but are configuration items are sitting under this monitoring profile or the endpoint which we are connected with. Right. And once this is done, right, so we can actually create multiple views around, uh, you know, storage views. Right. Uh, and similarly, uh, other. So these are sample metric views that have been created. Uh, for uh, different services, right? All right. Now, so the inventory is collected, the grouping is done. Uh, we can enable the metric views for each of the services uh, and for each of the devices that have been discovered by the probe, right? Now coming to the alarm management, all right. So there's a custom group that I have created to specifically see the list of Azure alerts. Right, uh, and it's very simple. You can also do a column filter, uh, you know, for um, uh, seeing all the list of uh, Azure alerts. Uh, all that we have to do is, uh, you know, select the probe as Azure, right? That will give you all the list of alerts uh, that uh, we are getting it from um, the Azure probe, right? Uh, similar way, we can also see the alerts for each of the resources. We can apply the custom filters. Uh, to see the alert specific to virtual machines, to see the alert specific to SQL Server DB, right? Uh, all that we have to do is leverage the custom filter section and then start creating the combination of filters in such a way that we get the alerts for the respective probe and for the respective resources. All right. Now, 
inventory has been once the inventory has been discovered and we group it and we the threshold management and everything is covered how can we get the reports out of it of course metric view definitely gives a contextual uh, navigation uh, from the groups view right there are other areas within uam which we can leverage for creating the dashboards and reports specifically on microsoft azure right so prd is a functionality that we have introduced with uam 20.4 right uh, for creating any metrics uh, or the prd report specific to azure right so select any cause around uh, uh, the uh, azure monitoring uh, i'll just take a sample use case over here for example cpu usage right uh, let me select you uh, all right so as simple as this right so we can see the cpu usage for all the three act active virtual machines right and similar way we can extend for other use uh, metrics that the probe is collecting uh, just as a few samples this is a summary view uh, like uh, what's the performance of a particular file storage instance block storage instance how many virtual machines are there how many are on how many are off uh, what is the count of the sql servers right uh, and then we can actually deep dive this is around uh, the sql sql server right what is the database size what is what are the data transaction uh, utilization uh, and then what is the sql pull details right so we can have uh, you know a good number of dashboards around uh, each of the services right uh, that we create perfect so yeah prd is definitely uh, you know one tool that we can leverage uh, for creating the dashboards for service level or at a resource level or at a resource group level um, you know or uh, a, at a summary level right so this is uh, definitely one dashboarding and reporting tool uh, that can be leveraged within uam and then the second one is uh, our own dashboard designer the advantage of dashboard designer is instead of you know if there is a requirement to see everything in a single page in a, in a single snapshot right uh, and then we would like to share uh, that uh, to a stake to our stakeholders uh, and if the requirement is not to come to the operator console but uh, you know just access this as an endpoint url right so we can publish this uh, share it with account users get the endpoint url of this dashboard and just get this access in a standalone way right and this dashboard has been created specifically for azure uh, you know here actually the pie chart talks about uh, what is the percentage of alarms uh, between critical major and minor and this talks about what is the inventory that has been collected uh, it's a kind of a summary view right i can see everything in a single go okay so here i can see the alarm data sources around uh, the different resources like scale sets load balances are good but when it comes to the sql database and virtual machines there are some alerts over there right uh, and what are the what is the reason for showing sql database in a red zone right so for that all that we have to do is just click on this data source and there will be a contextual navigation that will happen back to the operator console alarm view as you can see over here it is not actually listing all the 83 alerts that are there on azure it is actually listing the alerts specific to azure and even more specific to the azure sql db right so that's the advantage of contextual navigation with the dashboard designer with the operator console alarm view right uh, similar way we can have the contextual navigation to the virtual machines we can have the contextual navigation to the virtual machines uh, you know from a system view as well uh, clicking on this will help us to redirect to the device details where we can actually see uh, and trash some more using the metric viewer right yeah and these are extensions of additional reports for uh, the database servers right uh, yeah so this is a typical uh, dashboard uh, maybe i would like to give uh, one pointer around this the way that data sources have been created uh, right so It's, it, it's a very simple uh, data source. All that we have to do is we have to ensure that the probe is Azure and the subsystem is the SQL database. 
if this is configured what will happen is when we do the navigation from the dashboard from dashboard designer to the operator console alarm view these parameters will go as the url parameters back to the alarm console and then the parameters will automatically be applied so that's the secret behind the contextual navigation right similar uh, setup we can do for other data sources as well all right now the last topic that i would like to cover uh, in today's demo around the azure is service level management so how service level management is tied up with this azure monitoring right so when we monitor all the resources on the microsoft azure right we can actually generate certain service level agreements on those resources as well or service level agreements on those services now the way the service level agreements can be created is for example here as you can see there is a sla that has been created for microsoft azure for compute services meaning it's around the virtual machines right and here the sla has been created for virtual machine availability so it's a vm availability of the vms that are provisioned on the microsoft azure and the way uim calculates the availability is based on our power state metric right so based on this for a certain duration say for suppose for the last one month what is the uptime of this particular virtual machine for the current running month right and as you can see these cost constraints will help us to generate the service level objective which will be accumulated to the service level agreement right and we can as well see the uh, history of what is the performance of this compute services uh, say from the duration when uh, you know the provisioning has happened now one of the question that may come up is if there are thousands of virtual machines how can we actually create the sla reports with thousands of cost constraints yes so today we have the sla wizard but that is not supported directly for microsoft azure right so that is something uh, that is there in the roadmap but what we can do to leverage the sla wizard to ensure that all the virtual machines are you know if at all we want to check the availability for all the virtual machines that are discovered by the probe all that we have to do is we can get into the groups right and then we can say for suppose we would like to get the availability for all the 87 virtual machines you can simply create a netconnect mcs profile with respect to the netconnect uh, connectivity and then what will happen is the quas netconnect which will actually do a ping of these virtual machines right so as you can see over here while these are azure virtual machines still we can leverage other probes in uim to do a ping monitoring right uh, and similarly for remaining use cases it will not restrict us to use other mcs profiles or other mon uh, monitoring profiles from different probes right so now i can do a network connectivity on these machines and then say for suppose if i leverage network connectivity using the net connect probe then cause net connect will be collected then i can go back to the sla wizard in slm and then i can leverage the cause net connect because network connectivity is a supported probe for sla wizard so that way we can actually leverage the slm for the azure services as well right so these are the key dashboarding and reporting aspects including the prd metric viewer right dash uh, dashboard designer and then uh, the service level management sla reports which we can actually leverage in uim for creating the single pane of view for the health and performance metrics right so that's all about uh, the azure monitoring in uim